Hi guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to set up your website on a VPS server. So if you've ever created a website before, you've probably used something like a shared host and this is a web server on the internet that is shared amongst several people, usually about 20. And this means that the website itself will be much slower than if using something like a VPS server. So if your website has lots of traffic, you can use a VPS server, which is a virtual private server, on a website such as DigitalOcean. And this will increase the speed of your website and it will also probably be a lot cheaper to run. So for the purpose of this video we're going to be using a VPS server hosted on DigitalOcean. The reason I'm using this is because it is a simple cloud hosting company as the name suggests and for just $5 a month they allow you 20 gig of SSD disk space and 512 megabytes of memory. This pricing page shows that each VPS plan is paid on an hourly basis. And this means that if you have a VPS server running for just a week, you'll only get charged for a week of having the VPS server. And each plan is billed up to a monthly cap. So for example, the $5 a month plan has 512 meg of memory, one core CPU, 20 gig of SSD disk space, and one terabyte of data transfer. And the next most popular plan is $10 a month, where you get one gigabyte of memory, one core CPU, 30 gig of SSD disk, and two terabytes of data transfer. And if you're looking for a larger hosting plan, they will also do for $960 a month, 96 gig of memory, 24 core CPU, 960 gig of SSD disk space, and 10 terabytes of data transfer. Every hosting plan includes a simple and easy control panel, SSD disk drives, 99.99% uptime, automated backups and they also have locations in either the US or Europe. Another great thing about DigitalOcean is that they allow you to pay via PayPal via a credit system and this means that you don't have to link your credit card or debit card to their websites and each payment is made manually. So to set up a VPS server with DigitalOcean please click the button on screen now and that will send you to the DigitalOcean sign up page. So as you can see I've set up a cloud.benestectives.co.uk VPS server using DigitalOcean and when you set up a droplet you will get a custom IP address which is given to you by DigitalOcean and along the top obviously you can see the different settings. Now what I've done is installed Ubuntu 12.04.3 64-bit to install the software in to host my website. So in order to host the website we need some sort of control panel and this will allow us to get to things like the PHP MyAdmin page to set up MySQL and to access FTP details to upload the files to the server. So for this tutorial I'm going to use Zpanel, however you can use the much more well known cPanel, however that costs about $15 per month extra and you'll have to buy that with another company. The good thing about Zpanel is that it's free and open source. So once you've created your droplet, you'll receive an email from DigitalOcean and that will contain the IP address, root, username and the root password. So once you've got this information, you'll need to use an SSH client such as Putty and you can then connect to your new VPS server. So if we copy in the IP address from the email into Putty's hostname, make sure that we're selected on SSH and on port 22. Hit open and it'll say the service host key is not cached and hit yes. This just caches the key in the registry. Log in with the username root and if we copy and paste the password into Putty by right clicking and it will then log in. So we can then install Zpanel on our server. First what we need to do is go to this page and it basically runs through the steps on how to install Zpanel on Ubuntu. So if we copy the each command into the putty window 
and hit enter. So the first one is sudo i. This makes sure you're running in the root username for the whole installation. Next we need to ensure that we are in the home directory, which we are, but we can type in cd and this takes us up to the root directory. Next we need to download the installer file from github. That can be done by copying and pasting this command into putty and hitting enter. Next we need to make the installer an executable file by copying the next command and pressing enter. And that command you won't receive any response but it will do it. Next we need to run app to get install curl and this just make sure that the required packages are installed. So as we can see it says AT is already the newest version and curl is already the newest so it doesn't need to do anything. And now what we need to do is run the installer itself by typing the following command and pressing enter. Next we need to read through the GPL license and accept it. And as you can see it's picked up the time zone by itself and so if we hit enter then we can also enter the FQDN of the server which is cloud.benstexas.co.uk in this case obviously you exchange that for the what is your actual FQDN name and that is the fully qualified domain name and hit enter next you need to enter the public external IP address of the server and that's already filled in for us so we can just hit enter and it will say that Zpanel will now install, are you sure? and hit yes and Zpanel will start installing and once installation has finished it will automatically reboot the VPS server so once the VPS server has rebooted you can then access the control panel this can be done by typing in the IP address of the server in a web browser or alternatively the DNS domain name. So since I've set up a DNS service to use the cloud.benstetics.co.uk address it will automatically resolve the IP address of the VPS host. So if I type that in to Google Chrome or Internet Explorer and it will then load up the control panel login screen and the default username is zadmin and at the minute we don't know the password to login so what we need to do is launch winscp and if we type the hostname into the hostname box either using the IP address or the DNS name enter the root information which was in the email and select the file protocol as SCP and hit login and it'll say the service host key was not found in the registry and allow it to connect within the root directory we can then see a passwords.txt file if we open this and it will give a zadmin password if we highlight this and copy it into the control panel and log in we can then access the control panel admin page so once we've logged in first thing to do is change the password and this can be done to any custom password that you want and hit change so in order to host the website on our new VPS host we need to set up the A records for the www record and a blank record to the new VPS server. This can be done within your DNS control panel. So what I've done is set up a testing.benstechtips.net address and I've pointed it to the server. So if we ping the address of the website in command prompt we can see that it resolves to the VPS server host and that's because I set it up in the DNS host. Obviously when you set up your own domain you won't be using a subdomain like I am, you'll be using a top level domain in order to set up your website. The reason I'm using a subdomain is because I'm already hosting websites on 
all the domains that I own currently. And the way that we tell the setup panel to accept the domain is to go into the domain management section and hit domains. So once we've confirmed that we can ping the VPS server by typing the DNS name, we can then configure Zpanel to run within that domain. So if you head over to the Zpanel homepage and hit the domains tab, you can then set up the domain. We're going to set up a new home directory by hitting create and then hit create. And then you can see that it says pending. This means that the cron job has not yet run to allow Zpanel to pick up the new domain. So once your domain has turned live, it will show a green status. And in Zpanel, it'll take approximately 10 minutes for it to change. However, it can take up to an hour in some circumstances. So now if we head over to the website by hitting the domain name here, it's going to show that your hosting space is ready. This means that everything's working correctly. So first we need to set up a database to host the website in. Now this is optional and it depends whether your application needs a database to run. It probably will and this is the method that MySQL will use. So by heading over to the MySQL database section we can create a database and hit create and then we need to assign a user to the database and by typing in the username that's going to be used and mapping it to a database which is the database we just created then setting up the remote access to allow from any IP at the minute and hit create and this will give a username and a password for the MySQL database so on the FTP page we need to set up a FTP username to allow us to upload to the website. This can be done by simply typing in a username and a password and setting the access type to full access for now and then set up the master home directory to the root directory and hitting create and that will allow us to upload files to the home directory itself. So now we need a website to actually upload to the domain. So if you're creating a website, you could use something like WordPress or Drupal. So if you want to install WordPress, then click on the button on screen now. And that will take you to my previous video where I'll be showing you how. But for now what we're going to do is use a PHP test file just to prove that PHP is working and that we can access the site. So if you head over to the link on screen now, you can see this page. And this links you to a PHP test file that I created and if you hit download and agree and download and download the test file and just save it to the desktop we can see that it basically just has a PHP info command which shows all the information about PHP so we're going to upload it to our website with the FTP details we created earlier so if we open FileZilla which is an FTP client. Type in the host, which is our IP address of our web server, or the DNS name. For this tutorial, it is set as cloud.benefit.digital.co.uk, and you could alternatively use the host as your website. The username as the username you created earlier. And this will connect us to the public HTML folder. So if we go into this folder, we can then go into the web domain that we created and this index.html file is a file that was created when we set up the um, address here which is the default page that said panel uses so we can safely delete that file for now so now we can upload a PHP test file so we can copy it to the FTP location and this will simply upload it and for the purpose of simplicity here we're going to rename it to index.php so it loads automatically and once that is done we've finished uploading the files obviously if you're using something like WordPress there's more files than one you have to upload and you also have to configure the database which we did earlier so if we refresh the testing.benstatics.net page 
or your new website by hitting Control and F5. We can see that it's loaded the PHP info and this proves that our website is working as intended. A good thing about using a VPS server is the fact that you can change the PHP or INI file so the values here can be changed. For example the maximum upload and things like that can be changed with the php.ini file. Thanks for watching this video, please like, rate, comment and subscribe and check out my website at bensdetectives.co.uk and bensdetectives.net.